Hey everybody, Kendra the Vet Tech here for another Study Session Saturday. So in our previous lessons we've been talking a lot about clinical math and how to set up our dimensional analysis to get the end number, the desired result that we're looking for. Today what I want to talk about is putting that into practical clinical use. So today we're going to learn about reading labels on vials or in packet inserts to determine which numbers we need to build our dimensional analysis and then figure out how much of the drug we need to give to our patient. Before we get started today, I would like to remind you guys that prescription is not within the scope of practice of a credentialed veterinary technician, but what we're learning today is if a DVM says, hey, we're going to give this drug to our patient, where do we go to find the numbers so that we ourselves can do the math and figure out how much of this drug our patient needs? So we'll do a few real life examples today, learn where to look for those numbers and where to fit them in our dimensional analysis. So let's get started with our first example today. The first thing I have for you guys is a drug called ProHeart 6. So if you live in a heartworm endemic area, you have probably heard of and or used this particular drug before. It's an injectable, long-acting heartworm preventative. So if we take a look at the label here, the label tells us that this is for subcutaneous injections. So right away now we know that we're going to give this drug sub-Q or under the skin. And then we go on to read that it's a dose of 0.05 mils per kilogram of body weight, or it also gives us mils per pound, 0.0227 mils per pound. So this particular vial label is really useful for us here in the United States where we use pounds frequently to weigh our patients. We don't start in kilograms typically. So we can just go right off of this label in our 0.0227 mils per pound. So let's set up a dimensional analysis with that information. Since we already know how many mils per pound, this is going to be a short and sweet dimensional analysis. We don't need any concentration. So let's say that we have a 20 pound patient and it's 0 0.0227 mils per pound. Our pounds cross out and then we're left with 20 times 0 0.0227 and that comes out to 0 0.45 mils of the drug. So there's our first example of just reading the vial, figuring out the dosage ourself, plugging it in with our patient weight, and now we have the volume that we need to give our patient. Let's move on to our second example here. The second one that I'm going to use, oh, we'll still continue with the 20 pound example patient here. The second drug that I have though is Convenia. So this is an, another injectable, it's a long lasting antibiotic. And this label says, see packet insert. So not super helpful label on this particular drug. It does have the concentration on the front though of 80 mg per mil. So keep that in our back pocket for once we have the rest of our numbers for the dimensional analysis. Hopefully your coworkers have saved your packet insert for you. If they did not, they're super easy to find online, guys. You can just Google Convenia Packet Insert and it'll bring it right up for you to take a look at. So here is a little picture of the packet insert that I found for you guys online. This particular drug states that it's 3.6 mg per pound, so another easy one for us here in the United States, and it does also give the mg per kg if you are working in kilograms, so 8 mg per kg on this one. We'll just go ahead and make this easy on ourselves, skip out on the step of transitioning our patient from pounds to kilograms, and we'll do the 3.6 mg per pound. So let's set up our dimensional analysis of 3.6 megs per pound. And then you'll remember we found on the front of the label that it's 80 megs per mil. Alright, so our pounds cross out, milligrams cross out, leaving us with our desired mils. 20 pounds times 3.6 divided by 80 
0 0.9 mils of the drug. Just another reminder for you guys, if we're dealing with volumes less than one, to keep our placeholder of zero, just in case somebody doesn't see your little decimal point down here, so your patient doesn't accidentally get very overdosed. There are also other things that are really important with our packet inserts. Both of these drugs have little charts that come on their packet inserts. So if your patients are a nice round weight, you don't even have to do the math. You can just look at these handy little dose charts here and it'll tell you exactly how much to give your patient. The last couple examples that I want to chat about before wrapping up for today are multi-dose vaccine vials. So we deal with these a lot in large animal. When we have equine vaccines, they're multi-dose vials. Sometimes you'll see them in small animal for things like rabies. But we'll, I have a couple examples of large animal vaccines for you guys so you can see the labels. The first one here is an equine vaccine. You'll see on the front that it says it is a... 10 mil vial, 10 doses. So what this means is there are 10 mils of total volume in this vial and there are 10 doses in here. You can vaccinate 10 patients with this vial. 10 divided by 10 is one. So that means that each vaccine you draw out of this multi-dose tank should be one mil a piece. Our second vaccine that I have here is a CDT vaccine that has commonly been used in the mixed animal practices that I've worked in, and it's called Cavalry 9, and I'll show you this one really quick. So this tank says 10 doses, 20 mils. 10 doses, 20 mils. All right, so this is a 20 mil volume but you only get 10 doses out of it. You can only vaccinate 10 patients out of this one multi-dose tank. Simple math, 20 mils divided by 10 doses, 10 vaccines, is two. So each animal that gets vaccinated out of this tank with this particular vaccine needs to receive two mils of the vaccination. So that wraps us up for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me for this study session Saturday. If you have questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them below. If you don't want them out in the public, you can always contact me at KendraTheVetTech at gmail.com. If you have ideas, things that you want to learn about on these little study session Saturdays, feel free to contact me as well. You can subscribe and like the channel to keep up to date on new study session Saturday and other instructional video releases. If you'd like to learn more about veterinary technology, season two of the Kendra the Vet Tech podcast, available on your favorite podcast platforms or through my website at kendrathevettech.com. We're talking about career paths in season two, career paths for credentialed veterinary technicians. So feel free to join me there as well. Thanks, guys.